the genus that everybody should have, the beautiful ficus. Brewing joy. Hi, welcome to Growing Joy with Maria. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend, and I am here to celebrate my new favorite genus, the ficus, you know, we only know ficus, many of us only know ficus from the fiddly fig, right? We see this plant in every single magazine in corners. They grow so big and structural. You can have a freaking tree in your house. Amazing. Love the ficus lyrata. We'll tell you more about mine in a minute. But this genus is expansive and has so many different amazing options that you can fill large spaces in your home with, right? If you have a big space that you want to have some sort of structural tree, you can put a ficus there. But also, because they really respond to pruning, you can basically turn these plants into whatever size you want. And I love that. And I also love that so many varieties come in pink or really cool variegation. So let's talk about ficus today in part partnership with Proven Winners Leaf Joy. Now, I love ficus because of all of the things I just said, but the true reason why I am so excited to be making this video about ficus for you today, plant friends, is because I love The Office. I am a diehard Office fan. And if you are too, come along on this journey with me, whether or not you're an Office fan. But Michael Scott, the star of The Office, in his office for the seven years that he had his, you know, the series, he had a very large ficus benjamina in his office in the corner. You see it growing. And it was just this like kind of epic aspect of The Office, right? If you listen to The Office Ladies, podcast. Shout out to them. They track all the plants throughout the different series. But anyway, the ficus benjamina, which is this plant, this plant that you've probably seen, it was like super popular back in the 70s. Um, it's a famous plant, but it's known for leaf drop. And I've got really interesting varieties to show you that are better suited for not dropping their leaves, but you get that big tree-like aesthetic in your home. So I get to live my Michael Scott dreams today by adding ficus benjamina to my collection, and I'm so excited. Okay, ficus genus. Let's think about how they grow outdoors before we talk about how to care for them indoors. I will always remember outside of Mickey Hargate plants in LA, there is a variegated fiddly fig tree that is 40 feet tall. It like knocked me off my feet when I was there a couple of years ago visiting them. It's a variegated fiddly fig and it is just this like epic tree shooting up in the sky. So if you think about it, these plants are growing really tall, like I said, so they are soaking up the sun. These plants love light. If you want your ficus to thrive in your home, you want to give them light. These are not low light plants, okay? These plants love light. I'm going to tell you a story about how I got my ficus lyrata, my fiddly fig tree. His name is Figaro, by the way. I don't name all my plants, but this plant has a very special story, which I'll tell you about. And these plants aren't as sensitive as some of the other plants we've talked about in other videos, which is great. They're, they're awesome for beginner plant parents. They're awesome for advanced plant parents. So let's dive into the care to make sure you know exactly how to care for this genus of amazing plants. So watering, how do I water my ficus? I'd say these are very forgiving plants. I'm going to be real with you. I have let my ficus lyrata dry out pretty extensively and he, he handles it. But I would say you're going to want to give your ficus a good thorough watering. So you're going to mimic like a, a rainfall. You're going to water thoroughly, but not necessarily frequently. You're going to give him a good water, let the water come out of the bottom of the pot. And then you can let the soil dry out like the top inch or so of the soil. If you put your finger in, you can let that soil dry out a little bit before you give it another water. Don't let the pot completely dry out. You can let that top soil dry out before you give it more. These plants don't like wet feet. Wet feet are basically soggy root. The roots are the feet of the plant, right? So if it's wet feet, it's feet that are roots that are sitting in water. So don't overwater these plants. That's going to be a really easy way for them to drop all of their leaves and make you very unhappy. And also, if you notice, these plants have really large leaves. And so I recommend putting these plants in your shower once a quarter. You can also get like a cool glove like this to wipe the leaves, but these leaves, because they're so large, they kind of are like magnets for dust and weird particles that are floating around your home because of forced you know, heat and air conditioning. So keep your eye on how dusty these large leaves get. You can get a cotton glove, we'll link to these in, in the show notes, and wipe the leaves off, or you can mimic a rainfall in your home, put all your plants in, in your bathtub, let your shower run on them, mimic 
like a little rainstorm, uh, have a little spa day or a little pool party with your plants and then put them back. It also allows for any pots that, you know, any plants that have maybe dried out, if there's like a dry patch of soil, it just like allows for a really nice rehydration of all the soil as well. Light and ficus. These plants I have found in my experience can take more light than you think they can. So I want to share Figaro. Like I said, we don't name all of our plants, but we name our special plants in our collection. Figaro was a tiny stem tip cutting of a ficus lyrata that my husband brought home to me. Like so excited. It was the first plant he had ever bought for me. He was like at a fair. It was in a ceram, like a ceramicist was selling, you know, ceramics. And it was just like a an example plan. It wasn't even for sale. Anyway, that's a long story, but he brings it home. He's so excited. It's tiny. It's smaller than one of these ficus. It's got a few leaves and the leaves are about this big. I put it in a window. I give it some light and it's growing. It's putting off new leaves, but then I got a Soltec aspect light. That's one of my favorite grow lights. I've had many videos on my YouTube channel about the grow lights that I use in my home, but I decided to put it under a grow light and I was shocked at what happened. The minute I gave it more light, a longer period of time and a stronger amount of light, the leaves literally went from being about this big to the size that you see now. I could not believe the effect that just tinkering with the light had on my plant. And I think ficus are really receptive receptive to number one, grow lights, and also making sure that they get a lot of light. On the other side of that, I let Figaro grow. He was growing taller and taller and taller. And then all of a sudden he was too close to the grow light. His leaves were too close. And I noticed that he started getting like brown spots on his leaves. And that was phototoxicity. These plants can take some direct light, like a, a few hours of direct light or be under a grow light. But you also want to keep your eyes peeled for phototoxicity. If you see brown spots, that could mean that it's getting too much light because I didn't realize that I had to lift the, the grow light up to accommodate for Figaro's growth. So just keep that in mind because these are fast growers. Another thing with lighting is if you have a plant with variegation, it's going to need more light than a normal dark green foliage plant. That's because the green in the leaves is where photosynthesis takes place and that's where the plant makes its food. So if you think about it, plants eat light. Remember that. So if you look at these two leaves, this leaf has less green than this leaf. So this leaf can photosynthesize less than this leaf can. So you need to give variegated plants more light to allow for them to make the same amount of food that this plant would. If you have a plant like this incredible ficus belize, you definitely need, if you have pink variegation, those plants also need more light. Phototropism is when plants will actually aim their leaves towards the light source so they can absorb as much light. So a way to avoid Figaro leaning like the way he is right now is every week or so, I go in and I rotate his pot. And if you rotate his pot in full 365 degrees, he will keep growing straight. If you see like this backside is totally bald because all the leaves are facing the other way. So quick tip. So with humidity in ficus, here's the deal. Your ficus are going to be so happy if you give them humidity. They want humidity. They want like 50 to 70% humidity. They're going to be really happy if you have a humidifier running. However, I have found in my experience that they are more tolerant to lower humidity. I've never put a humidifier near Figaro and he continues to grow. Sometimes you have to monitor when their leaves are coming out of the sheaths. You have to kind of help them a little bit, but they are more tolerant of our homes, which makes them a great solution for so many plant parents who can't be baby babying their plants with humidifiers all the time. So if you can give them humidity, please do. They will be very happy, particularly with the ficus benjamina plants that have thinner leaves. The thinner the leaf, the more sensitive they are to humidity, I've found in my experience. But you don't need to if you can't supply that at the moment. With fertilizing, I say my rule of thumb for all houseplants is fertilize your plants when you see new growth. So if you see the plant putting off new growth, give it the nutrition that it needs to support the plant throwing off new beautiful leaves for you. And now let's talk about a favorite aspect of the ficus of mine. The fact that you can really control the shape that these guys turn into. All of these guys are going to be fast growers if I give them the light that they need. They're going to shoot up into trees. But I want to put some of these guys in my bookshelf, which is a limited amount of space. 
in my office. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this on camera with you plant friends so you can be empowered too, because I know pruning your plants is so scary, especially your favorite plant, right? So this is the ficus Belize. I'm obsessed with this plant. I love pink. I love pink plants. It's a favorite like little subcategory of mine. You see that right now, this entire ficus is growing in one large main stem. Oh my God, the variegation on the stem is so insane. There's pink on the stem. It's so cool. I could let this plant continue growing. There's new growth here to continue growing, or I could chop the top of this plant off and that is going to trigger lateral growth. It's going to get more stems. The plant's going to be bushier. It's not going to be leaning because I can tell already if I let this plant keep growing, it's just going to start leaning. I want like three or four stems on the same plant. So I'm going to chop this off. I'm going to keep it in this shape and just let it keep getting bushier. Note with ficus, when you chop this plant off, there is a latexy kind of toxic substance that is going to leak out. It's almost milky in texture. It's going to leak out of the plant. Some people are very allergic to this. It can really irritate your skin. So if you do prune your plant, wear gloves. But just so you know, I will be off camera so you don't see the like spillage of latex. You know what? Y YOLO. You only live once. Let's do it on camera. So I'm going to get my snippers. Have plant-specific snippers when you cut ficus because once again, you're going to get exposed to this toxic substance. If I was really good, I'd be wearing gloves, but I forgot my latex gloves. So I'm going to go like this. Um... I'm going to hold this so I'm going to avoid cutting, but as I cut, you're going to see, one, take a deep breath, everybody. I know pruning can be scary. It feels like you're ruining your plant, but it's okay. I'm making this prune because you're going to come in and you're going to grow laterally and you're going to be so bushy and amazing and pink. One, two, three, boop. All right. Now you can see immediately there's latex pooling at the top. Um, you're going to want to have a paper towel to blot the milk off. And you, uh, this latex substance will dry on your plant leaves and then it's hard to get off. So you're going to try and mitigate that. What I want to do is like, you know, when you're shaving and you cut yourself, you put a little piece of paper towel on it. I'm going to do that here. So it's not as aesthetic for now, but you're with me. You're with me on this journey, plant friend. It's all good. So that's how you prune a ficus. And I will give you an update on Instagram on how this grows. So follow me at Growing Joy with Maria to see an update on what this looks like after it's been pruned. So let's talk about a couple troubleshooting things. Beware of the light stress, what I talked about. You got to watch for that toxic light toxicity if you are giving your plant a lot of light for it to grow. The biggest feedback that I've heard about ficus is leaf drop. So they are more sensitive. They don't like drafts. They don't like being moved. They don't, they're, you know, they, they like what they like. <laughs> and sometimes you see ficus drop a lot of leaves if they get like a cold shock. This is the perfect opportunity for me to thank the sponsor of today's video, Proven Winners, because they heard that comment from a lot of their consumers, and they actually developed a line of the ficus benjamina. These plants are famous for dropping all their leaves when you bring them home. The leaves are much thinner than the more succulent ficus elastica leaves. They're way more delicate, and they're, they're more sensitive. So if you notice, Proven Winners Leaf Joy has actually cultivated a line called Klingon, and they've bred ficus benjamina to be less susceptible to leaf drop. So if you want to try a ficus benjamina, but you've been scared previously like I was, like I wanted to live my Michael Scott dreams, but I was nervous because I heard these plants were finicky. You could try one of the Klingon varieties and hopefully have more success. So proven winners, they made all the plants that we show you today, except for Figaro, obviously, who's the grandpa of the collection. Um, go check them out. When you're at your local garden center, ask for the proven winners, Leaf Joy houseplant brand. Look for the plant tags. They have plant Latin. They have care guides. They're doing great things. And let me know in the comments which ficus you bring home and add to your collection. Let's dive into some of these species. So let's start with the ficus benjamina since I had just started talking about them. This is the Michael Scott plant from earlier. You can see them in a lot of different sizes. So you can actually bonsai these. You can train these in really interesting ways. You see this size, you see a little bit bigger over here, or you can bring these home as like a full five feet tree. These plants will grow into a full five feet tree. What I love about these plants is how amazing the variegation is. So normally, like the ficus benjamini of the, of the 70s is just a, a classic green leaf. This is the ficus benjamina anastasia variety that they have, which has this insane lime green variegation. It is so gorgeous. 
when the leaves come out, it's a much lighter lime green. And then as the leaves get older, it turns into a more interesting, darker, still lime, but like a darker light green. Now, let's move on to what I think is the most underrated group of plants in the indoor jungle, the ficus elastica. This plant does not get celebrated enough. I feel like because it's just like your standard, you see it in plant shops, it's not like crazy rare or crazy this or crazy that. Like people aren't talking about the ficus elastica enough. I think this plant is so amazing. Ficus elastica, also called the rubber plant, native to Southeast Asia. These plants can grow up to 100 feet outdoors, okay? If you want a tree and if you want a pretty tree in your house, try a freaking ficus elastica. I mean, you could grow a green and white tree in your house. You could grow a pink tree in your house. I want a pink tree in my house. I'm so excited for you. Um, even though we're going to let you grow bushy first and then we're going to let you grow tall. So these plants are amazing. You got to be careful with the latex. We have a couple of different cultivars I wanted to show you. So first off, this is the Chloe. Classic, dark green, simple, elegant, understated leaves. The bottom of the leaves is still really beautiful. You do get a hint of pink and purple. The sheaths of the leaves are still pink. The sheaths are this like protective coating that the leaves come out curled in. I think this is totally beautiful plant, especially if you're looking for plants with deep, shiny green foliage. With the ficus, with the rubber plant, you also notice these leaves are succulent. These leaves hold water way more than the Benjamina does. So this plant can probably tolerate less watering than this plant would. I would keep this plant soil more moist than this plant because of that. This is a variety that I think is so stunning. It's called the ficus teneki. Teneke, teneki. You say potato, I say potato. But I think this is so beautiful. It's tri-color cream green and pink it's got the gorgeous pink undersides obsessed the gorgeous pink stripe down the leaf the leaves are like so glossy they feel so nice to your touch but i just think this is such a gorgeous variety i'm so excited to grow this out and really enjoy it i've seen this on instagram a lot it's so beautiful and then here is a, a very interesting variety that i hadn't seen before but i think is so like sexy honestly Look at the deep green shine on these leaves. And then the maroon, dark, this is a moody plant. You know, I've seen goth gardening trending lately. If you have a goth garden, this could be great for your goth garden. I love the deep coloring. I love the pink veins. I honestly think the underside of this leaf is as beautiful as the actual leaf. So I don't think I said the name of this plant. It's the ficus abijan. I'm definitely not pronouncing that right. But I think it's so understated and kind of sexy. I love how shiny and glossy the leaves are. Once again, it's so important to clean the leaves to let them keep this gloss. But I think this is really beautiful. And even in a plant collection that is green forward, like if most of your plants are, are green, uh, if you have a lot of green foliage, this is a much darker green than the other green that I'm seeing in other rubber plants. And I think it's really beautiful and I really love it. Last but not least, I'm going to butcher this plant's name. It is called the ficus, I need to read it from the plant tag, P.S. The ficus sia fistipula. The ficus sia fistipula. The ficus sia fistipula. Say that three times fast. This is another really amazing tree-like plant. Actually, let me just check my notes for this one. Okay, so the ficus sia the Maybe that's just the new name that I'm going to call this plant. <laughs> but she's worthy. Even though I can't pronounce her name, she's worthy. So she's found in swamps. So she can tolerate a little bit more moist soil than other ficus. She's found in swamps. She And she's nicknamed the African fig because she grows this very interesting fig. And apparently the name... Cianthus <laughs> I'm never going to pronounce his name right, but the fig, when half, resembles a cup, and the root of that Latin epithet is cup. So I thought that was really interesting, but I love her for this deep, glossy leaves. I love, she's just like a really beautiful tree-like plant that has really beautiful, big leaves. These leaves get really big as the plant grows. I'm really excited to grow her under a lot of light and see how fast she can grow and how big she can grow. So thank you so much.
I have shown you so many ficus in this video plan, friends. Which one was your favorite? Obviously, besides Figaro, I feel like he's the grandpa of the group. He's like, you know, towering over us. But which of these newer varieties that I showed you is your favorite? Obviously, mine is the Belize because it's pink and I love pink. I'm so curious to hear your thoughts. Do you have rubber plants? Do you care for different ficus? What are the tips and tricks that you use? Let me know in the comments. Like this video, subscribe so we can keep bringing you more videos in the future. Thanks again to Proven Winners for partnering with me on this video. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. Nope. And until next, <laughs> and until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep growing joy.